Welcome to North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hackstall. I'm your host, Dan Hammer. On tonight's show, the coach reviews North Dakota's split with Miami this past weekend. We'll also hear from Mark McMillan on his successful return from injury, and we'll preview North Dakota's next challenge within the NCHC, a road trip to St. Cloud State this coming weekend. Coach, good to be back with you again. Coming off a split with Miami, a 3-2 Miami win on Friday night, followed up a 4-1 win by your hockey team on Saturday. Now that you've had a little time to reflect on the weekend how do you view it well both really hard fought hockey games and you know you don't always get what you what you end up deserving in this game but uh, I guess a, a broad overview I think they were probably a little bit better than we were on Friday night and, and deserved the close win uh, and I think Saturday night we were the you know the team that was a little bit better through 60 minutes uh, and were uh, for full value for our win outside of the first 10 minutes on Friday did you think you played 50 pretty consistent minutes after that. I thought we played pretty well. Uh, you know, I, it, it was such a it was such a hard fought battle uh, both nights. But uh, Friday night for sure, we spotted them too uh, to get going, and then we tried to dig out. You know, we weren't able to create as much offensively as we need to uh, in a hockey game like mm -hmm. that. That was probably our biggest issue, other than the start on uh, Friday night. Okay, Dave, when we come back, we'll take a look at Friday night highlights as we get going here on North Dakota Hockey with Dave Haxtell. North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hackstall on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sioux Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, the Greater Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Indian Triumph of Fargo, and by Hot Springs Spas and Pool Tables too. Welcome back, Dave. Let's take a look at highlights from Friday night. Your team number two in the country, Miami number seven in the country. Two very good hockey teams going to head-to-head. -to -head. And Mark McMillan returning after missing four games with a lacerated wrist. Yeah, it was a real boost to our lineup. He, uh, he came right in and uh, didn't show a whole lot of signs of rust. I thought he picked up pretty much where he left off and uh, it was nice to have him back in our lineup. He obviously proved to you during practice last week that he was ready to go. Well, the, the, his first day of practice, our first work day on Tuesday, uh, he came and asked me after practice what I thought, and I told him I stopped watching him after the first five minutes. He was fine. <laughs> he was ready to go. All right, early first period now. Uh, you exchange some rushes back and forth, and then there's going to be an icing here, and the faceoff is going to be in Miami's offensive zone, and it's going to lead to Miami's early goal. Well, you know, it was a, you know, we talk about bad icings, uh, and it was a bit of a sloppy icing on our part, and then just loose coverage, and uh, you know, it ends up in the back of our net pretty quick. They've got guys up front that are good in that area. They've got quick, strong sticks, uh, and this was just uh, uh, slow and uh, you know, a bit soft coverage on our part. Just uh, 30 seconds later after Miami scores, you go on the power play here, but Miami's going to turn it into a shorthanded goal and an early 2 nothing lead. Yeah, they've got a real mentality on their PK to get up ice and generate offense, and this was a tough play. Uh, it bounces off of our defenseman's uh, stick, or excuse me, leg on the wall, so real tough play, bad bounce. You know, we just, uh, we'd like to play that two-on-one a little bit differently. Want to give our goaltender a frontside save there. Shortly after that, Zane McIntyre makes a couple of key saves here to keep it 2 0. What did you think about your response, your response rather, immediately after a 2 0 deficit? Well, I thought we, uh, you know, I, I liked again our, you know, our overall ability just to settle down on the bench and yeah. give ourselves a chance. And certainly Zane gave us an opportunity uh, with those saves uh, right there. Uh, gave us an opportunity to just get moving in the right direction and try to put some positive shifts back to back. All right, later in the first period, Michael Parks and Drake Kajula working down low. It will lead to a Parks goal that would be reviewed, but it would stand as a goal here. Yeah, you know, I thought, uh, you know, on the weekend, uh, one of the areas that, uh, that Mike was so good was down low, off, coming off the yellow. We've seen it before. Uh, but this is a great hard work and shift. Uh, we didn't see Troy Stetcher's efforts uh, to lead to this, but he did a great job uh, in helping out on this goal, and Mike Parks finishes it off. Again, this there was no real clear indication immediately that this was a goal, but you, you see the puck behind Jay Williams here. Yeah, there's no question. Uh, you know, the, the obvious uh, call was not made by the referee on the ice, but he did call it a goal on the ice. Yeah. Uh, his initial call was a goal. It was confirmed by video. All right, so you get within 2-1 here. Luke Johnson nearly ties the game here. He rings it off the post. Yeah, I don't know if there's anybody we'd rather have that uh, puck uh, on on anybody's tape other than Luke's. Yeah. He, uh, he just rang it off the pipe there. 
All right, Dave, two goaltender interference calls late in the first period here, and uh, maybe you can help clarify the situations, each one individually different. The first one, Blake Coleman runs Zane McIntyre. It leads to a scrum. It has an impact on the game because you lose Colton St. Clair during the scrum for the rest of the game here. That had a huge impact uh, on, you know, on our, on our uh, overall game. Um, you know, it was uh, it was a pure goaltender interference call. Uh, Zane got knocked down. He uh, popped back up, and the right call was made. Uh, you know, my biggest issue, uh, I have no issue protecting the goaltenders. I don't like uh, the way this play ends uh, with the Miami goaltender embellishing this play. And that was the issue that I had with, with any of the calls uh, in that first period. Well, and I think a lot of people question why there wasn't an embellishment call on Jay Williams. There. Second period, then while kidding, killing off the Connor Gorder goal, Drake Kajula makes a great play. It all started back in the defensive zone for the shorthanded goal here. Yeah, again, you know, we talked about Miami's aggressive mentality, uh, killing penalties. Uh, we've had a bit of the same this year with uh, some of the guys on our kill there. They're looking to, you know, play good defense, but also when uh, the occasion arises to go and uh, try to create some offense. Drake. All right, so it's a 2 2 hockey game. You've dug your way back now, and we're playing a even hockey game. How about the power play on this night? 0 for 6 and it generated 8 shots. Our biggest issue was coming up with pucks and I thought that was, you know, I talked about not generating enough offensively. Purely, simply, I don't think we won enough pucks below their goal line, whether it was 5 on 5 or power play. Uh, and uh, that was our biggest issue on the power play on this particular night. All right, later in the second period, it's going to be a real physical shift coming up by your hockey team here with uh, Steph Patton and uh, Luke Johnson and, and Trevor Olsen. Uh, making some hits, but it all also lead to uh, a penalty, a roughing penalty on Steph Patton that will put Miami back on the power play. Yeah, and I'm not, you know, I won't debate the the, the calls or uh, uh, how they turned out. I thought we had four pretty good hits here. Uh, you know, we worked hard to get to the front side there. Uh, you know, Steph's here in, in open ice. Uh, he's the one that ends up getting called. And, uh, you know, as, as the game uh, would have it, uh, a bounce of the puck and a good play by them, uh, and they're back on top by one. Yeah, you talk about a bounce of the puck. You're going to see this puck come directly at you, and not the first time this season we've seen a hard bounce off the end glass benefit in an opposition's goal. Yeah, hopefully uh, those bounces are going to start to equal out for us because yeah. so far they've gone against us in our building. Uh, their guy makes a good play. We, we don't box him out, but he makes a good play. Uh, picking that puck right out of the air off of the back glass. All right, Sean Corrales makes it 3-2. Opportunities tough to come by for each team in the third period here. Nine shots combined. Here's the final seconds in which you've pulled Zane McIntyre for the extra attacker in the game. Again, sometimes it's a game of inches, and you, the, the puck here is just going to bounce wide of the net. Well, it is. It's a game of inches. You know, we, we could have had one when it bounced by. Luke uh, almost had the opportunity to bring it back and stuff it in, but... Yeah. Uh, you know what? That's that's the cumulative effect over 60 minutes. We need it to be a little harder. We need it to be better through the 60 minutes and not rely on the bounce of that puck at the end of a hockey game. 3-2 is the final. Miami grabs the series opener. We visit with Michael Parks and Drake Kajula following the game. 100% we're not ready to go from the start. I mean, uh, that's the first thing Coach Axtell said when he came in the locker room after the game. And, uh, you know, we need to come out. This is our building. We need to come out and dominate the game, dictate the game, and not let the uh, a great team like that come in here and spot them two goals. Can't happen. They're a good team. Anytime you spot a good team like that, uh, two nothing lead early on in the game, it's going to be hard to battle back. And you know, we we did battle back, so we're proud of the guys for uh, the way we battled back. We just got to be sharper in the first ten. Dave, what were the themes post-script as you look back at Friday night's game and looked ahead to Saturday? Very simple, Dan. Uh, for our team, just to start better, to play a full 60 minutes, uh, and to play a harder game in all three zones. When we come back here on North Dakota Hockey with Dave Haxtell, we'll look at North Dakota's 4-1 win on Saturday night. North Dakota Hockey with Dave Haxtell on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sioux Shop at Ralph Ingalls Stad Arena. The Greater Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Indian Triumph of Fargo, and by Hot Springs Spas and Pool Tables, too. Welcome back. North Dakota and Miami Saturday night in the series finale. Dave, let's take a look at Saturday night's highlights, a 4-1-1 for your hockey team, and a couple of early indicators. One, much stronger start for your team. Yeah, we came out of the gates and, uh, and played an outstanding uh, first period of hockey. I thought we were on our toes uh, and dictated the pace of the play. You got through neutral zone better, early start, and also uh, 
you were really heavy on pucks yeah, throughout I, this game, weren't you? We were just simpler, Dan. We, uh, instead of trying to make fancy plays through the, the offense or the neutral zone and into the offensive zone, we were single-minded. We were getting pucks deep. We were winning second pucks and making plays with those pucks. Mm -hmm. You mentioned uh, one of the things that stood out with Michael Parks' game on the weekend was his play off the wall. Here's another example of him making a play off the wall and creating an opportunity. Yeah, just holding it, protecting it, uh, you know, winning puck battles, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, these are some of the little points during a hockey game that accumulate and add up. Yeah, working below the goal line when your team is playing well, it's making plays like this. Yeah. Outstanding work here by Bryn Chizik, keeping his feet moving. Uh, you know, the Miami defender does a pretty good job covering him, but just outstanding extra effort by our number 29. Ryan McKay in the Nets on Saturday, and it makes the save there. Later on, Miami, the call here is a goal initially, and this is a will be a play that's reviewed. Tell us about the review that reversed the initial call, which was a goal. Yeah, you know, we just get flat-footed and, and turn a puck over. Uh, the play goes to the net, and uh, this puck gets behind Zane, but it doesn't cross the goal line. Now, it's his uh, right to have an opportunity to spin and take care of that puck without being interfered with. And uh, the Miami player pushes through him, thus no goal. So we uh, remain scoreless at this point. Go to the second period now. It's one nothing Miami after an early Red Hawks goal. And again, Michael Parks using his reach and his stick creates a play here to make it 1-1. Yeah, after going down one nothing, real good pushback for us on a great four-on-four -four shift. Outstanding play to finish it off uh, from Michael to uh, to Mark McMillan. Yeah, and on the replay, Dave, heck of a pass. You talk about threading the needle. That's what Michael Parks did here. Well, it's just confidence. You know, slowing this play down, uh, just a little bit of a pause there and finding the hole. Uh, that's just pure confidence right now for Michael Parks. So it's 1-1, just two minutes and 19 seconds later. Drake Kajula with probably the biggest individual play of the weekend, the play that people are still talking about. Well, these are the types of plays that uh, that generate an awful lot of excitement. <laughs> I hope I hope Chiz gets a little bit of uh, uh, some props there for taking the big hit, but outstanding play by Drake Kajula uh, to... Uh, you know, to go through their defenseman and then finish off the play. Well, the first thing that Drake Kajula did mention after the game was Bryn Chizik's play at center ice. No question. He took a big hit to make that play, but uh, the highlight real play is uh, is Drake's. Well, the building is buzzing now. You got the lead, your first lead of the weekend, 2-1, and you really build off that lead, don't you think, throughout the second period? Yeah, you know, it was a, it was a close, uh, tight third period or second period. There were some pretty good opportunities both directions, both teams playing well, playing hard, and making plays. Uh, you know, we take advantage of a turnover off the wall right there and then just a great attack play, uh, you know, to the to the wide winger and, uh, you know, Mike makes no mistake on it. Yeah, the two uh, teammates who have so much chemistry between each other, this time it's McMillan returning the favor, setting setting up Michael Parks here. And the Parks, of course, is not going to miss this one-timer, is he? No, he, uh, you know, it was uh, the pass bobbled just a little bit along the way, but it sat flat enough for him to get a good piece of it. Yeah. Uh, not as many power play opportunities for either team on Saturday night. Miami had three power play opportunities, but you really handcuffed them. They had just one shot during those three. Yeah, they had some good opportunities, but, you know, we uh, we did a good job surviving and getting sticks in, getting getting blocks. Uh, we did a real good job in that area. little give and go here between Parks and McMillan. Did you tweak your power play in any ways on, on Saturday night as you generate a power play goal here in the third period? No, you know, we just, uh, you know, they're very good down low uh, on initial pucks. So we, you know, we were able to get a couple of pucks and we were able to make some plays. Uh, the, you know, the, the, the play that we scored on in the third is just dragging a box over and, uh, you know, putting it back to the weak side and getting it to the net with traffic. Drake Kajula's right. goal makes it 4-1 uh, to one here. McMillan, Kajula, and Parks, a yeah. big, big weekend, uh, big night, seven yeah. points on Saturday night. You know, and on each of the plays, uh, you know, you, you kind of have the uh, the one guy that's not in the limelight. Mark McMillan there at net front doesn't get a lot of credit, but without him, that puck doesn't go in the net. Saturday night was a total team effort. Uh, those three accounted for most of the points, but you had a lot of different players really playing their role, and I thought one guy who played especially strong for you in a lot of phases was Brendan O'Donnell on Saturday night. Yeah, you know, Odie had a real good night. I thought he played uh, he played fast. Uh, he had some good physical play. 
uh, and he, he made positive things happen with the puck whenever he had it. Yeah, a real physical play here, getting around Ben Politis to create a scoring opportunity. Third period, did you, did you feel you really did the things you needed to do to close this out on both ends of the ice? Yeah, we felt confident uh, all the way through this period. I like the way we started the period. Uh, then, you know, we scored the power play goal halfway through, uh, and we were able to close it out from there. The last three, four minutes, I thought we sat back a little bit too much, and we gave some opportunities. Um, but at that point in time, it was just a matter of winding the clock down. A very strong effort and a 4-1 win for North Dakota to salvage the split Saturday night. We spoke with several players, including Mark McMillan and Drake Kajula. Uh, you know, I think right from the drop of the puck, we were ready to go tonight. And, um, you know, it's hard to narrow down a few places. I think we were good all over the ice tonight. You know, obviously in the offensive zone, we did a good job grinding pucks down low and getting pucks in net, and, and we did a good job defensively. I think we were just trying to be simple, take care of pucks, play fast, get pucks to the net, just doing all the simple things and uh, try to let some of the skill come out from there. Walk me through your first goal. Um, I mean, it, I guess you got to start with uh, Chizik taking a huge hit there. Without him taking that hit, um, you know, it's just I don't get that puck and I don't get the opportunity to make that play. So uh, hats off to Chiz for taking that hit and making the play. And, um, you know, I just waited for the D-man to turn his feet. And as soon as he turned his feet, I tried to slip it through his legs and uh, got in all alone. And uh, once again, I tried to make a fake. And as soon as the goalie opened up his legs, I put it between there too. So. McMillan and Cash and Parksy uh, came out strong from the first shift, and you know they just kind of carried it through and kind of mm -hmm. led our team. And uh, I thought we played a good, hard 60 minutes, and you know we got the win. Coming up next on North Dakota Hockey with Dave Haxtell, we'll hear from Drake Kajula, Mark McMillan on his return, and preview North Dakota's NCHC series at St. Cloud State. North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hagstall on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sioux Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, the Greater Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Indian Triumph of Fargo, and by Hot Springs Spas and Pool Tables too. Well, that Drake Kajula goal has exploded on YouTube and social media. Dave, he is now tied for the national lead in scoring. And you saw through his work during the summer that he was poised for a big, pretty big season, correct? And Dan, we felt like he, uh, he came back in great condition and just very confident. And I think you're seeing that uh, in his play. He's doing a good job on the penalty kill, on the power play, as well as five on five. And he's gaining points on in all of those situations. A week ago, Brendan O'Donnell labeled the Drake Kajula's game tenacious. I think that's one good word for it. You know, yeah. uh, we're, we're seeing a complete game uh, out of them. And, uh, you know, to be a one-dimensional player uh, in this day and age is not very effective. Uh, to have a guy that's leading us in points but uh, is still willing to go out, block shots, make hits, uh, do some of those little things is very important. As we mentioned earlier, Dave, Mark McMillan returned this weekend, uh, just missing four games. Uh, he certainly was a factor. Not only was he back, but he was a positive factor for you. Yeah, and that's a real key. I think that speaks to his work level uh, while he was out of the lineup and injured. Uh, it also speaks to his presence of mind as a veteran. He came in, and as you, you, know, you use the term positive, uh, he helped our hockey team this weekend. What did you see with what he can do with the puck to this point? He played left wing, but he, he took several face-offs during the course of the weekend. So where is he at that point? Yeah, you know, I don't know if, uh, you know, the dex dexterity with that hand is probably not at 100%, but uh, I think he uh, adjusted to it very, very well. And uh, I think he played a smart game in that regard. Uh, we're comfortable with him either on left wing or up the middle right now. He did a good job in the face-off circle. Well, following the weekend series, McMillan admitted that uh, this was a big step in his confidence moving forward. You know, it felt good in practice during the week and getting to a game. Uh, it felt really good, and I knew today that, uh, you know, it wouldn't uh, restrict me so much from doing things that maybe I thought it would. So, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, and plus it's pretty easy when you miss five, four games to, to get back in the lineup and be pretty excited to play. What kind of confidence booster is this for you coming off your injury moving ahead? Uh, big, obviously. You know, I, I dealt with a couple injuries in the past, not, not too many, but last year obviously coming off one, uh, 
being able to come back after, uh, you know, I thought I had a pretty good start to the year to, to be able to, you know, kind of mesh with Parksy and Cadge and make some plays tonight. It's obviously big for, for myself moving forward. Next up for North Dakota, a trip to St. Cloud State. Dave, the Huskies in their building anywhere, always a rival of yours. So this is a, another big weekend in the NCHC. Yeah, it just uh, you roll from one weekend right into the next in yeah. terms of tough opponents. And, uh, you know, these guys have a, have a great hockey team, veteran group that's back uh, coming out of one of the toughest uh, early schedules uh, throughout the nation. Uh, they went in and took three out of four points uh, out of Western Michigan. So this is always going to be a great series. We're looking forward to going into uh, the National Hockey Center. They're probably going to have a certain mindset coming in. They've won just one game in their last five. Well, they've uh, you know they, they've played a lot of good hockey teams yeah, in that have. regard. Uh, so regardless of what our opponent is thinking, I know what our mindset has to be, and that's what we'll concentrate on. All right, good luck at St. Cloud, Dave. We'll recap the series next week here on the show, and we're back with some final thoughts next. North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hagstall on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sioux Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, the Greater Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, and in Triumph of Fargo, and by Hot Springs Spas and Pool Tables too. North Dakota and St. Cloud State Friday and Saturday at the National Ice Center in St. Cloud State. As Coach referred to, the Huskies have played perhaps the toughest schedule in college hockey to this point. They're below 500, two and three at home, but still a very talented hockey team led by Johnny Brodzinski and Joey Benick. They are the offensive leaders to this point of the season for St. Cloud State. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.